Hello, I am Gerhard Randers Persson. I'm the chief physicist here at RARF. I'm going to give you a tour of our microbeam laboratory and show you some of the essential pieces of uh, characterizing the beam. So let's go on in, uh, look at the lab, and uh, proceed. So here we are in the microbeam laboratory. There are two sections of the laboratory. First, I'll show you this. This is the uh, equipment that the biologists use in preparing the cells. We have uh, microscopes they need to check on the condition of the cells. We have the, the uh, lab bench where they uh, clean the area that they can work with the cells. We have the material that they need for doing their experiments. And we have incubators where the cells can be grown up before and after the experiment is done. Just to give you an idea what uh, the facility looks like so we know what we're doing in the experiment a little later on, let me show you uh, what equipment we have here. The beam comes up through a hole in the floor and then above the uh, inside this spool is the last electrostatic lens that focuses the beam to a micron diameter spot and the beam comes out through a thin window, thin vacuum window at this position. The cells are grown on a, on a dish with a thin plastic bottom and the sample is put in over the exit aperture and we'll see more of that a little later. The microscope is an epifluorescence microscope we have a lamp with a fiber optic guide to bring the light into the microscope. We have a choice of cubes depending on what fluorochrome we're looking at. There are two lenses on this microscope. One a low magnification lens which is used to uh, uh, scan the dish and find the approximate location of cells. And then there's a high magnification lens which is used uh, during the irradiation for final positioning. The second objective also has a detector mounted on it, it's a transparent detector, so we can count particles arriving while we're observing the, the cells uh, during the irradiation. There is a second detector which is on this swing arm here, it's called a solid state detector, and it provides a pulse uh, for diagnostics and we'll show how we use that in a moment. There's a rack of electronics here and when we come in one of the first things we do is verify that the vacuum is good, that the pressure is low. Uh, the lens can't operate in, in a bad vacuum so we have to verify that the pressure is good. We verify that the voltages are on the detectors. Uh, we look to see that the lens voltages are on and those are indicated on a meter down here. But there also is a, uh, a monitor detector, a monitor computer this shows the lens voltages and the control voltages that are being sent to the uh, uh, to the power supplies and uh, nice straight lines are good, the system is behaving normally and, and, uh, and smoothly. We also have a, the control computer. This is the main control computer. We use this to uh, control the number of counts we get, the position of the stage, the voltages on the lenses and all of those features that we need to adjust are, are controlled from here. There's another monitor here which is actually a parallel to the control monitor of, of the uh, accelerator. The accelerator is downstairs. But from here we can make minor adjustments several, on a number of parameters involved with running the accelerator. So at this point uh, we're going to go on to look at uh, how we define the resolution of the beam and uh, its location. Now we're going to be uh, doing a knife edge scan and that is the, the way we determine the size and approximate position of our beam. Well, what we have is two thin metal foils at right angles to each other and this is positioned uh, over the beam exit. Uh, I'll put it in place. Okay, now we're going to put the knife edge over the exit of the uh, radiator in the same position that the cells will take when they're being irradiated. And we'll put a detector in place over that to measure the particles, to look at the energy of the particles. The way this works is that this thin metal is thin enough that the particles go all the way through it. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and as the, as the knife edge is moved across the beam, we have a, some of the particles go through without losing any energy, and others have lost it. And what we want to find is a position where half of the particles are in the open space and half of them are going through the, the metal. So now we'll move over to the computer 
and, uh, and run an experiment to determine the size of the beam. We'll run a computer program to move the knife edge the way I described in order to determine the size and location of the beam. First I put the, uh, the knife edge out of position and we call for particles and here you see on the oscilloscope the pulse height which is proportional to the energy of the, uh, of the particle beam. And if I then put the uh, knife edge uh, in position over the beam, we see that the amplitude is decreased. So these particles are now all going through the foil and in the other position in this position they're all going through the open portion of it. And so now we'll run the program which will move the, uh, the edge in a, in a way to determine the location where half the particles are in the full energy peak and half of them are uh, uh, going through the, uh, uh, the foil. So there's a, all of them through the foil and so it'll back up again. It didn't go far enough. It's going to do another step back and it'll find the position by the scanning procedure. It'll find the uh, location where half the particles are in the main peak and half of them are in the, uh, in the, in the energy loss peak. Now the scan is finished and the uh, shutter is closed. And now we look at the output from this resolution scan and we see the numbers here that the diameter of the beam in the X direction, measured in the X direction, is 0.8 microns and measured in the Y direction is uh, 0.68 microns. And this also gives the position uh, of the knife edge at the, at the uh, half value points. So now we're going to move the uh, knife edge to that uh, position that it takes us to be zero. So now we've positioned the knife edge in the, uh, at the location of the beam and we have the microscope looking at it. And here is the image that we see in the microscope. This crosshair, the point right in the, in the corner here is where we believe the beam to be. And I can uh, use the cursor uh, to put a, uh, put a crosshair right at that location. So now this is marking on the image where the particle will be, particles are. And what we're going to do now is remove the knife edge from the stage and put a, a fluorescent bead in this location so we can do the next step in locating the beam. So now we've exchanged the uh, knife edge dish for one that has fluorescent beads on it. And uh, let me focus the microscope a little bit. So the bright spots here are the fluorescent beads. Let me adjust the intensity. So what we want to do is put one of these beads uh, at this crosshair position. So I, I guess I'll move this one down there. And I can do that with a... Ah. Get this out of the way. Okay, so that's about in the position where we expect the beam to be. And what we're going to do now is switch lenses on the microscope. So what we're going to do now is put the detector back in place and do a scan which is similar to what we did with the uh, knife edge, looking for regions where the uh, beam is passing through the bead. And, uh, and we'll get, it, get that position displayed on the computer. Now we have the bead in the approximate position of the, of the beam and we're going to call up another program which will scan the bead in a similar way to the, what the knife edge did. Uh, and so I'll do this uh, called scan the square and what it does it counts for uh, 100 counts in each position and it looks at the percentage of particles that are in the full energy peak and the percentage of, that have been attenuated. And you can see on the scope at this position, they're mostly in the full energy peak, and that corresponds to the blue color in the uh, display. And as this moves around into the area where it's red, 
you can see the amplitude has decreased. So these particles are going through the bead, and in the blue areas, the particles are going outside of the location of the beam. Uh, so this will continue scanning around until we have a complete picture of the bead, and then we'll move the bead to the center of this square, and it will be exactly over the, uh, uh, the beam position itself. When I mark the center of this bead with a cursor, the computer calculates how far it has to move the bead in order to center it uh, on the screen, and it has transferred those coordinates to, the, uh, to this uh, screen, this form, and when I tell it to make an absolute move to that position, the bead is now centered over the beam. And the next thing we're going to do is to observe this bead with the microscope so that we can measure the coordinates and teach the computer where the beam is based on where the be bead is located now. So now we're looking at the bead with a high magnification lens. We've taken a picture of it here again on the same screen and we tell the computer to uh, find the center of that bead and now it's, it knows the center of that bead and we'll go down to this screen and uh, transfer those coordinates so that the computer can use that location to uh, position cells over the uh, beam uh, for the actual radiation. So we finished the setup of the uh, physics aspects of the uh, microbeam experiment and we're ready to proceed to the uh, biological radiations.